Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm back already. The time, excuse me, is now 9.29, March 12th. And I have, um, I want to share with you today's encouragement for today. Because irregardless of how much time is left, whether we think it's a couple weeks, a couple months, or a couple years, it doesn't matter. We have work to do. It's not time to sit down and rejoice just yet. There are still some folks that don't believe and we need to let them know. All right. This is from Cross Cards and the title, You Were Made for This. Encouragement for today, March the 12th. It's my grandson's 19th birthday. I called and sang to him last night. On his recording. And I hope he does get to listen to it. It's Proverbs 31 Ministries. That I get every day. And now and then I choose to share one with you. And I think it sounds worth sharing. I mean they're all good. But you know. I've gone over that before. Why well, I don't do them all. Alright this one's by Jenny Allen. You were made for this. The. Um. Scripture, excuse me, is from Genesis 39, verses 2 and 3, English Standard Version. It goes like this. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. And he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. All right. It's easy to wonder if we're missing some mystical, great, noble purpose that's supposed to squeeze into our ordinary lives. Okay. We might feel numb or bored. We ask questions like, I'm in, I'm all surrendered to God, but what, but now what? What does he want me to do? God's goal for our lives is that we live in complete and utter surrender to and dependence on him. He built us to need him. And it's always his mercy to show us that need, whatever the cost. Living on mission with the creator of the universe is the most beautiful, purposeful thing we could do with our short time on earth. This is your purpose. To know God, that includes Jesus and his Holy Spirit, and make him known. That means telling others. However you can do that. As we read the story of God through scripture. We know we are to love without hesitation. Every person God puts in our paths. And we are to love God more than anything. Are you searching for your calling in life? If you're reading this, you have the opportunity for ministry right under your nose. Never needing to move or change a thing. Life is too short to spend time worrying about where on this planet you should be. As Jim Elliot, the great missionary, then martyr, said, Wherever you are, be all there. Interesting quote. Wherever you are, be all there. Rather than becoming paralyzed with fear that you might move when you should stay, or stay when you should move, 
Pray and commit your ways to the Lord and then do something. God invites us into his will like a loving dad in a swimming pool, asking his little child to jump. Whether that child jumps really far or barely scoots into the pool, that dad will move to catch him. So don't be afraid. God's will is moving. And if we will just jump, his will is going to catch us. Yeah, I get that. Now, if we step out on our own, I got to pause right here. If we step out on our own, and it is not of God, we might find ourselves falling flat on our face. But you know what? God knows your heart. That you tried. Pick yourself up. Dust yourself off. Go back to your prayer closet. Say, Lord, clearly that wasn't your will. Please tell me what to do. And you may have to wait. Maybe you were trying to be a street preacher. And you got beat up or you got a ticket because that particular area that kind of thing wasn't allowed you see what I'm saying we're not all called to do the same thing even if maybe that's what you want to do so that's I'm throwing that in there all right but he will catch us if you go to jail, he'll help you get out. Maybe you can witness to somebody in there while you're at it. Joseph did this so beautifully. Now that was me talking. Now I'm back to the article. Joseph did this so beautifully. God had shown him that he would do awesome things. And rather than worry about being stuck in prison or as a slave in Potiphar's house, Joseph did great things with God wherever he was. You can do great works wherever you are. Likewise, don't be afraid to go or be afraid to stay. I'm not exactly sure if they mean literally moving or staying where you live. You could take that to the Lord because maybe some of you have been like me and I know another sister in Florida have been talk, praying about moving. Remember I put up a prayer request for her? Now if Jesus is coming in a week or two or this month, next month, it's kind of pointless. So these are things we need to pray about and how to be content and what can we do for him where we are. I'll move on. In heaven, even the most adventurous missionaries among us won't be rewarded because of an earthly location. They'll be rewarded for their obedience and faithfulness. Those who spent most of their lives in cubicles, you know, like secretary, those little cubicles they sit in, and driving in carpool lines will stand beside them receiving similar crowns because wherever we are is our ministry place. Okay, let me move on. It's not our place of ministry that matters most. It's what we do in our places. For Joseph, his calling and God's purpose for his life took determination and a conscious choice to surrender. He gave everything he had to serve well, even as a slave and a falsely accused inmate. If you don't know the story of Joseph yet, 
because you're like a new Christian or maybe you've kept in the old the New Testament more and this is in Genesis um, 39 well this is Genesis 39 2 through 4 reminds us the Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man and he was in the house of his Egyptian master his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. Okay, before Joseph became Potiphar's right-hand man, Joseph went through a lot. He was the favored child of 12. Jacob, who became Israel, Okay, this is where the 12 tribes of Israel come from. Joseph was the second youngest. And his firstborn from Rebecca. Do I have Rachel? Rachel. I tend to get the, the women mixed up. Anyway, he got Leah first. He got tricked into working seven years for Rebecca, I'm pretty sure that's right. Let me look that up. I don't want to tell you wrong. Let me just Google it. Who did? I'm going to put Jacob. really love Rachel Rachel or Leah okay so he worked seven years um, this is in by uh, Genesis 29 it moves into Genesis 30 the story of Joseph um, his father works seven years to get Rachel. He ends up with Leah. Leah has seven kids. There's a couple of maids in there that he has children by. Then he finally has a son by Rachel, which is Joseph. Well, Rachel was his true love. So he loved Joseph more than the rest. And he didn't hide it. He made him a coat of many colors. And his brothers made it look like he was killed. They killed an animal. They dipped his coat in the blood. And they sold Joseph to an Egyptian slave master. A guy who sold people into slavery. It was going on way back then. All right. That's just the bottom line of that story. How it got started. And you can read all about that in Genesis all right, now let me move on. I mean, I could do a whole video on the life of Joseph. If you like, I will. Okay. Because I understand all that. Let me back up to this. For Joseph, his calling and God's purpose for his life took determination and a conscious choice to surrender. He gave everything he had to serve well, even as a slave and a falsely accused inmate. Genesis 39, 2-4 reminds us the Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man and he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. One of the many things Joseph could do was uh, dream interpretation. That's what got him where he was as uh, second in place in Egypt. If we know that no place, no job, no marriage, no child is going to perfectly fulfill us, 
we can choose to quit fighting for happiness and start fighting for God's glory instead. It takes determination to trust him while you're still in your place doing the seemingly mundane tasks of life. Let's assume that if we're breathing, then we have a purpose for being here. Every one of us with breath in our lungs still has something left to do. And if you're really broke and you can't do anything but pray, we've talked about this before, you become a prayer warrior and you be the best prayer warrior that you can be. If God has blessed you with some extra finances, please share it. If he's given you a mouth, Start making your own videos. If you're good and you understand the Bible, you can do Bible teaching. We don't get good Bible teaching in churches anymore. People need to hear it here because you're not getting it behind the pulpit. Here's the prayer for the day. Dear God, thank you for letting me participate in your good work of redeeming all things. Give me eyes to see the people all around me and the opportunities you've prepared in advance for me to do. In Jesus' name, amen. The truth for today comes from Ephesians 2, verse 10. For if we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's not a complete sentence. Hold on. For if we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do, I do not want an Easter devotional. Thank you very much. Okay. The, well, you can look that up. Ephesians, This where it goes to is Bible study tools. And I see no way. Well, Ephesians 2.9. Let me go there. Not by works that no one can boast. Oh, yeah. Ephesians 2.8.9 for uh, for we are saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. All right, so then it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Ah, do you get that? For we are saved by grace, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Verse 11, Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called the uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. Okay, so that's Ephesians 2. We covered 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So we got a little Bible lesson in there too. We are supposed to do good works. 
but you can't be saved by your works. You have to accept Jesus. You're saved by grace given by Jesus through faith, your faith of believing that he died on the cross and rose again to save you from your sins. You see, you have to have the belief first. You have to accept him first. And then you're called to do the good works that he set out for you to do. Okay? I hope I made that clear. So with that, I'm going to say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and teaching and over the internet connection and over each and every one of you as well and all your devices. With that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.